Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Wack Crendor, and welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Crendor. I think this is 28, 29, we're somewhere around there. I've lost, I've lost count. Damn. Yeah, dude. Um, but today, I am joined by the one and only Ego Raptor, or uh, Aaron. I don't know which one you want to go by. I don't care, you can call me Asshole if you want. Alright, today we're joined by Asshole. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> How are you? How are you doing today, man? Man, I'm all right. I just had some sunny side up eggs, and I'm and I'm drinking some water. Did you it's make them yourself? Fucking great day. Yeah, yeah, I did actually. Thanks, man. It was. Nice. It took about three minutes. Um, cooked them up real nice. <laughs> I like that, to have eggs every morning. You know. Is that your favorite type of egg? Do you mix up the eggs? You just like I'm going scrambled today. Dude, I, I mix it up all over the place, man, because, you know, I get tired of scrambled every so often, and I'm like, well, I'll go sunny side up today. And uh, it was a good choice, because I was way into it, and um, there's just something about the runny yolk, man. It's fucking awesome. I know. I like when it's on a burger, too. Oh, dude. That's the best. Mm -hmm. that, that is absolutely the best. I like when I have bacon on the side, and then I can dip the bacon in the yolk. Yeah. Oh, my that's God. The, that's the like jam. It. That's a trip to Flavor Town. <laughs> I don't know how the yolks are so flavorful, man. They're just—I yeah. guess there's a little bit of salt in them, but mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. So uh, this is—I is, uh, was telling you earlier. This is just a show where I just sit here and fish. If people play WoW, they can fish along. If they don't, it, it's just me fishing, uh, and it's just a chill little show where we just talk about life, love, happiness. Wait, so our interview makes it look like you're just like alone, sad, fishing? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's just oh, uh, right now I'm just sitting in a Rothy Highlands fishing with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's, You don't uh, even have like twine attached to it? It's just a stick? <laughs> well, it's got like some shitty twine thing attached to it. And then the bobbler, bobber, bobbler, I don't know what it's called. It's probably the best, best part. Wait, so you actually gonna like catch a fish, and is it gonna be like this big event? Oh no, it's uh, I just I do Alt Z, so it gets rid of all the UI and shit, and then I just keep fishing, but I never catch the fish. <laughs> <laughs> so I've caught I think one fish while doing this. So I, was, I did one with uh, Rob or Rurikar, old man Willikers, and uh, he was like, "Dude, you need to catch a fish. Like, just turn your shit off and just catch a fish." And I was like, "All right, all right," and then I caught one, and it was just an old boot. And that was, that was the peak of my existence. Oh. <laughs> oh. So it is purely an aesthetic to drive the, the narrative. Yeah, exactly. It's just purely, <laughs> it's purely aesthetic. So cause I, didn't, I didn't want it to be one of those interview shows where they got like, God, this fishing noise is really loud too. Hold on. This is, it's just like whenever you catch something, but I don't look at it. So it's just, there we go. Let me just turn that down. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to edit this out. This is just me doing that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want one of those shows where it's like after a sports game or e whatever they do. And they're just like, so how does it feel out there? How do you just get the, how do you feel with that game winning goal? And they're just like, well, you know, I feel good. I felt pretty good to do that. You know, I didn't want one of those type of shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, or what's the, they have like daytime TV. Where they bring on somebody and they're just like, yeah, you got a new movie coming out. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, oh, well, let's play a, a game of trades to celebrate. And stupid shit like that. I just wanted <laughs> that old-timey, nostalgic two men in a boat feel. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good, good aim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, for people that don't know who you are, uh, why don't you just tell everybody about yourself for a little bit? Um... Well, I uh, I host a show called Game Grumps where I play video games and talk over them, mm -hmm. or let's play, if you will, uh, with my friend Dan, who is the co-host, and we are the Game Grumps. And uh, I I rose to I don't know internet uh, stardom. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna say. Um, uh, virtual recognizability. <laughs> That's good too. Uh, because I made cartoons that were parodies of, of video game moments and such um, on Newgrounds and then on YouTube and 
I sort of used that recognition to make a Let's Play channel, and, uh, and then it became pretty okay, and people seem to like it. So uh, that's my story. Um, pretty pretty boring, if you ask me, but uh, life's been pretty cool, so that's not boring. <laughs> Uh, well, I was curious. As you, like, as you can tell by my breakfast, I made eggs. <laughs> Dude, I wish I had eggs right now. <laughs> Dude, so I can I make yourself. Mine you. are pretty fucking good. Dude, my scramble is like second to none, bro. Do you have like some crazy technique? You watch Gordon Ramsay do it on a video or something? Yeah, dude. No, that I mean, that was the linchpin for sure. That was, I saw that and I was like, whoa, you can make a difference? So I started <laughs> experimenting and like making all kinds of weird shit. I always liked cooking. Cooking's really fun. Dude, it's like chemistry, but you can eat it afterwards. Yeah, exactly. I'm exactly. Trying, to learn to, trying to learn to cook ramen. I'm going to do my first bowl uh, this Saturday, this this weekend, and uh, I'm very excited. It, it requires a lot of like time and patience, but uh, there's just something very zen about that. Like, like just, just spending all day making one thing, and then at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, I can eat it now. I can invite yeah. people over to eat it too. <laughs> uh, like what? So you've like been learning how to cook ramen better. Like, how have you been doing that? Well, I haven't done it yet. Um, it's uh, like my just... first, my first foray. Um, so I'm very I'm very excited. I got all the got all the materials, the pot and the strainer and the pasta maker, and, and just to make it all from scratch and see how it turns out. It seems pretty easy. It just takes a long time. Yeah, that's pretty it's, cool. I just realized that ramen was like my favorite food ever because when I was a kid, I was really into like top ramen mm -hmm. or Maruchan ramen. And uh, my dad used to call it favorite noodles. And um, and I was really into like pasta and just like fucking spaghetti with cheese and butter. And I, I was really into the, the feeling of like having noodles in my mouth. It's a noodle connoisseur. Yeah, exactly, and and it sort of took me until I was thirty to realize, like, oh, I, that's like, I'm really into that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I love that feeling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and like, I get ramen like at least like twice a week. Um, yeah, when you have real ramen, it's like such a big difference because most people grow up eating the the stovetop ramen, and then you actually eat real ramen. And you're like, oh my god, this is so good. It's so good. And there's so many different styles too that I haven't even like begun to try. So I'm, I'm super excited to like experiment and do weird shit with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting off of cooking, <laughs> uh, how did you get into just drawing in general? Because I know you said that's like how you got into just doing YouTube. So how did you get into drawing? Uh, I just kind of did it. I mean, I was I was really into cartoons as a kid, as most kids were. Hmm. But um, I don't know what made me go like, well, I'll make my own. Um, I guess it was because like, I was really into clay as a kid. And I just like made whatever I wanted. And usually it was like a character from a video game or a, or a cartoon that I was into. And then I, <clears throat> I was really into like collecting. So I, I tried to, if I made one character, I had to make like every character. And then I'd like line them up on a shelf or whatever. And play with them. I'd play with the little clay figures like they were action figures, and they'd get all like gross and dusty and shit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but um, do you I have a favorite cartoon too? Because you said you watch a lot of cartoons. Uh, I mean it varied, um, just based on what was on. But like Rocco, dude, I always, love Rocco. Yeah, Rocco was always huge for me. Running Stimpy, um, like Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't have Cartoon Network, so I didn't know like Dexter's Lab and Cow and mm -hmm. Chicken until much later. Uh, but that, that, I liked a lot of weird ones too. Well, I, I I started getting into anime too when I was like, God, what was that? Elementary school, maybe middle school. Started watching Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon, and I was like, Yeah, I was fucking way into that shit. I was like super impressionable at that time, so I I was just like. I don't know what it was, but it really just like grabbed me when I first saw uh, Dragon Ball and, and Sailor Moon. I was like, fuck, these are so cool. I, I love this shit. And I was like constantly drawing Dragon Ball characters and, and making my own Dragon Ball OCs and shit. <laughs> yeah. So before, like, they were, uh, before they were called OCs. <laughs> uh, you were the OG of the OCs. 
There you go. I was just I would just be like, this is my character. Like so it was an <laughs> MC. Did you uh cuz I know you got I know you're doing uh, new grounds before YouTube. Cuz uh, cuz I remember I'd go on new grounds and just watch random stuff back then. But like how did you get onto new or like what was the process of you being like, "Hey, I should put my stuff onto the internet?" Um well, it was just because like new grounds was it was so fascinating. Like I was a fan before it existed when it was Assassin and it was just Tom making Tom and his friends making cartoons. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it was just so cool that it was like, Oh wow, these guys are making cartoons and just putting them up. You know, it's like completely avoiding the whole, like get it on TV thing. And like, because of the, it felt so subversive because it was like, Oh, this is violent. And, um, and maybe that's what like, uh, attracted me to, to anime too because like you know sci-fi had saturday anime and that was where like the more adult animes were with like the blood and the swearing mm -hmm. um so seeing cartoons like that on the internet where it was just like no holds barred it was like whoa this is awesome <laughs> and then uh and then the portal came out um the newgrounds portal where you could submit your own and then i started seeing even more like comedy stuff and i was like man I I was looking at how sort of because a lot of those dudes weren't artists they just mm -hmm. they just were funny um, so a lot of the cartoons were very crude and and I would watch them and I'd be like man I could I could draw better than that like why aren't I making cartoons I could easily make cartoons and I started learning that the program they were using was Flash um, I was like well I should get Flash so I got like a I think I got like a demo and then. Uh, or, or a freeware, or mm. some kind of thirty-day trial, or something like that. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> and I made, I tried to do it, and it was like much harder than I thought it would be. And I was like, oh shit! Like they know how to color, and I just made <laughs> yeah. like these really shitty, like sketchy animations, and I would just show them off to friends. But I would never submit them to the portal or anything. I was just kind of like, well, you know, it's just a hobby, I guess. Um, and the portal started growing and everything, and I started. Uh, Wanted to do like voiceover. Mm -hmm. um, so I, was, I was really into like getting little puppets and giving them voices and stuff. And uh, and then I saw a thing on Nickelodeon about the voice actors for um, All Real Monsters, and they were all standing in a booth and they were doing the voices. And it was like I just for some reason never had that thought of like, oh, these voices are coming out of people. Yeah. And then seeing that, I was like, oh my god, that's. Just, I don't know. There's something about it that just fascinated me. Um, so I started like trying to do voices more and more. <clears throat> and then um, there was this guy on Newgrounds that was like getting really popular that my friend showed me called Legendary Frog, and he uh, he was making a lot of like parodies of like Resident Evil and stuff. Uh, and I noticed like it wasn't just him voicing stuff; it was like his friends. And I was like, oh fuck, I want to do voices for this guy. So I, th I think I just sent him an email. Uh, or an AIM or something, and I was like, mm. "Hey, if you ever want voices? I can do it." And I think I sent a demo or something, like a really shitty demo. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, man, sure." And and um, he was nice enough to to actually consider me because um, he had a friend. The he had friends, Dim and Tom. They were the Super Flash brothers, and they were making a cartoon, and they needed voices for some some moments in it and and he suggested me and so they came to me and they were like hey heard from uh joey legendary frog that you do voices you should fucking do voices for our cartoon and i was like oh my god yes yes <laughs> this is my moment <laughs> so it was um they just did like a opening it was like an announcer it was like uh, the beginning of video game but it was really bad <laughs> yeah. uh, and then uh, that went up, and I was like, "Oh my god, I fucking!" I just got immediately addicted. I was like, "I, I love this. I, I love doing it, and then seeing it happen, and it's like to words and a cartoon and a moving image." And, um, so I just started networking more and more with like a bunch of Newgrounds people and trying to get more voice roles, and and then eventually, like, I made a bunch of friends and who who also made uh, Flash cartoons, and and then. Uh, first thing that I released on Newgrounds was Metal Gear Awesome because I um, I got really into voicing Snake because like Metal Gear parodies were really popular at the time 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people were making them, and like a couple people asked me to do snake uh, impressions for their cartoons. And I was really into that voice, and I was like, well, I want to keep doing it, but nobody is asking me to make cartoons anymore, so I'll just make my own cartoon. Uh, and then I made Metal Gear Awesome so I could do the voice of Snake, <laughs> like, solely. <laughs> you just um, made it for your own selfish reason. It, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it, it took me it took me about, like, three months, even though it was, like, three days of work. It was just kind of like a lazy project. Um, and uh, after I finished it, I, I showed it to a bunch of friends, and they were all like... They were like, "This is so funny, man! You gotta, you gotta put this on Newgrounds." And I was like, it, at, at that point, I was like, so, I was so determined, like that wasn't what I was gonna do because I was just like doing voiceover stuff for Newgrounds cartoons. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, "There's no way I could release this. This is crazy. It would get blammed immediately." <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were like, "No, no, man! It's really funny. You should release it." And I was like, "Oh, all right." So like. <clears throat> I think it was like late at night, so like nobody would see it. I put it up on Newgrounds, and then like I went to bed. Like I didn't even, I didn't even care about like the comments or anything. Yeah. I was like, oh, fucking whatever. I'll just put it up, and I'll <laughs> do a, your video got blammed message the next morning. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and this was like a, uh, this was like a couple days before a, a, a con. It was like MegaCon, I think, in mm-hmm. Florida. Um, and then uh. I woke up and I was like too busy to check it or something. I, th- I think I, I, if if I remember that correctly. So I just went um, to Orlando and stayed with a friend, and uh, I got a message from uh, a friend of mine who was also on Newgrounds. It was like, "Hey man, your your video like hit front page or whatever." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, you should you should check it out." And I was like, "Oh," <clears throat> and I went on Newgrounds and like Metal Gear Awesome was on front page. <laughs> And I was like, "Holy f- what?" <laughs> um, and I was, just, and I just spent all day reading every single comment, and they were all like, "This is really funny, huh? Wow!" <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is so cool!" And, I was, and, I was, and like, I think I was like late to the con that day because I was just like reading comments, and I was like, "This is amazing!" I got like <laughs> fifty comments or something, and I was just fucking ecstatic, uh, <clears throat> and. Uh, then after that, it was just kind of like a, a, a whirlwind because I was like, oh, man, what's next? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't really know. And then I got a call from MTV. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? And they were <laughs> yeah, like, hey, we, saw your, uh, we saw your cartoon and uh, we really like it. We want it for our show. We want like little little comedy bits to like be in between segments on our show. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was like it was like it was like two hundred fifty dollars per cartoon or something. It was something like ridiculously shit. Yeah, um, it's like this idiot kid won't even. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, I'm getting paid. <laughs> uh, and um, and so I did that for a while. And that's where like the the short awesome cartoons came from. Was like because I was making them for MTV. Uh, and then that show went under, and I really wanted to like release them because people were like really excited about. Uh, more awesome cartoons because um, I really liked Metal Gear Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like fought with MTV for a while, but releasing them and finally they were like, yeah, as long as you like put them in like a compilation or something, you don't release them like like one at a time. I was like, cool. So I had to bundle them up in threes and then put them up on Newgrounds. And then those those sort of built the awesome brand a little bit, I guess. And that was... Um, and then from then on, it was history. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what about just gaming in general? Because obviously, you always love drawing and cartoons and stuff. What about gaming? Like, what was your first gaming system, and like, how'd you get into all that? My f- well, my dad. When we were very young, I lived in New Hampshire. I was like three. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad bought a car at a Dodge dealership and they were having a deal where if you bought a car, you got a free Nintendo entertainment system. Oh, well. So he brought home an NES and, and he was really into it and he would play it a lot with us. Um, but I was like the hooked immediately. I was like, it was like Mario and Dr. Mario. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like every so often he would bring home a new game. And, uh, I remember he, <laughs> I remember he showed up one day with with Ragar by Tecmo, I think, mm-hmm. uh, and which was the weirdest fucking game. But 
uh, he was just like, yeah, I just found this on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? And I thought he was lying for the longest time. And and then I asked him like recently, I was like, hey, remember when you said you got Ragar and you just found it on the side of the road? <laughs> like He was like, oh, yeah, no, I did. I just I was just driving and I saw that that NES cartridge and I was like, what the fuck? And I got out <laughs> and there it was. And it's like, it like rattles when you, <laughs> I still have it. I think. Uh, um, how's but, that even like someone just like driving, like yeah, get rid of this shit. And yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> it, like maybe they were trying to throw it away. Like a, like and it fell out of the garbage bag or something. I don't fucking yeah. know. Well, plus at the time, like those things were like gold, like it's just yeah. to throw out an NES cartridge. It seems like a pretty big deal. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, so the NES really got me hooked, and then uh, we got the Super NES for, like, Christmas, my brother and I, mm-hmm. uh, um, and then that was that was pretty huge, uh, and then it was just, you know, ever since we were just, like, video game kids, and I remember um, <clears throat> when, I, when I finally got my own room, I got, a, like, an old shitty CRT, I think it was, like, a hand-me-down from my, my parents, I got a new TV, and they just gave me that one. And so I put it in my room, and I hooked up all the systems to it. And I was like, oh, cool. They got, like, a setup. And <clears throat> and then, um, God, it was so – it was it can all be traced back to this one moment because, like, you know, it was like video games were in my life and everything, but I wasn't, like, crazy about them. Like, I wasn't like, oh, man, fucking I'm going to yeah. look up a new release or whatever. <laughs> um, but I was just browsing the internet because I was really into, like, the whole con scene, like, cosplay and art and all that. Mm. And – uh I saw this cosplay group for uh, Jet Grind Radio, and it was so cool. And I, I was just, I was like, "Oh, those, that's awesome! Like, who are these characters?" And I remembered seeing the commercial for it, and it was like nuts for the Dreamcast. And I was like, "Oh man, this is this is awesome! Like, fucking, I'm gonna." I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna get a Dreamcast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get a dream. I'm gonna get this game. Like, this is this is my. I'm, I have a job and I have money, and I'm gonna go to a pawn shop, and I'm gonna get a Dreamcast, and it's gonna be awesome. This is well <laughs> after the Dreamcast had died. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, uh, I, I saved up. It was eighty bucks. I remember so vividly, and uh, there was a pawn shop that had one, and I just like walked in, and I was like, I want that, and he was like, All right, and. <laughs> And then he gave it to me, and I was like, "Oh my god, I, I bought my own video game! This is crazy!" <laughs> and then, uh, <clears throat> and then I went straight to, uh, I think it was Target, and they still had a Dreamcast section. It was like literally three games, <laughs> um, and then two of the games were sold out, and the only game left was Jet Grind Radio. <laughs> oh my god! And I was like, "Holy fucking! Sh- this is <laughs> destiny!" <laughs> so I bought a brand new copy of Jet Grind Radio. Um, and uh, and it was on like super sale. It was like fifteen bucks or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, my mom had to like pick some stuff. She was driving me around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, she had to pick some stuff up for her barn or whatever. And mm. I just remember sitting in the car, which it felt like an eternity because I was like, I gotta get home and play this. <laughs> and, and I was just like flipping through the manual, like all excited. And I was like, This is ah, I did it. This is this is life right now, man. I fucking. <laughs> I, I made the money and I spent it and here's a video game right in front of me. It's in my lap and I'm like flipping open the Dreamcast console and everything like, oh, the disco's in here. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, and then I got home and hooked it up and, and I was like so impressed by how easy it was. And, and then I put it in and it worked and, and I just played Jet Grind Radio all fucking day. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is. Fuck! This is life right now. I was like, in my own room, and I was like playing video games, and like I was like, "Oh man, tomorrow I gotta get up and go to school." And when I come home, I'm just gonna play Jet Grind Radio. I'm gonna do that all day. It's gonna be awesome. And then that's 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 when I just went crazy, and I started uh, getting like a huge Dreamcast game collection. Like all any any money that I got that was like extra money, I just w- I went on eBay or like <clears throat> to pawn shops. Or even to like stores that still carry Dreamcast games, and I just like found new Dreamcast games. And I remember like researching all the rare games and like going to Blockbuster and Hollywood Video and like negotiating mm. with them to like take their rental copies that weren't renting anymore. I was like, I'll buy this off of you. Like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna. And I, and I was renting games still because um, they still had Dreamcast games for rent, and uh, I was just a fucking great time. Like the Dreamcast, that was my gateway, man. 
Um, and I was like way into fighting games, so I got like Marvel vs. Capcom two, and then and then I discovered the GameCube, and that was that was the fucking end of it when I got Mario Sunshine. I got an, oh, that was it was a great game. Yeah, I also got a GameCube from a pawn shop, I believe, and then I got Mario Sunshine, and I just I I beat I got all 120 shines or 50 120 I think hmm. in in three days. I just oh I, I woke up and I played it and I went to school and I came home and I played it and I went to bed and I just <laughs> I just got everything <laughs> in three days and I was like ah <laughs> I don't know it was it's it just is I don't know what it was like I don't think my life was miserable at the time or anything or like I needed an escape or something I just I was just so entranced by the concept of like this is mine and this is my time and I'm like accomplishing something mm-hmm. uh, with. And, and it's fun, and and like, like my friend, like, my friends can talk about it. It's fun to escape too. Like a lot of people think escapism is like I'm getting away from just my shitty life or something. But it's like you can have a good life and still be like, yeah, I'm just gonna like escape. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it was also like a a real good, um, because that was a moment in my life where I was like visiting friends a lot. I was like staying over their house on the weekends and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and and then it was just always about like what game was out. So like, you know, for a while it was Smash, and then like we were really into like importing music games. So we had like Pop and Music and DDR, and then uh, and then Wind Waker was really big, and that's when I discovered like S Video inputs, and I was like, look at how much more beautiful the the, <laughs> the video is! Wow. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, so it was a way, it was also a way for me to like connect more with my friends. Like I remember there was a dark time where it, uh, where everyone, every one of my friends, but me was into EverQuest and, and every day we'd come to school and we'd hang out and they'd talk about EverQuest and I was just like, oh, fucking, I don't care. (laughs) I hate EverQuest. (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) Um, but then they got out of it again and then we started playing Smash again and it was fun. (laughs) because <laughs> uh so you just you don't really like mmo rpgs in general then yeah no i just i i really like like I, I totally get it and there's like there are games that have like tapped into that that like you know do do the thing and now do this thing and now do mm-hmm. this thing like that whole and then like level up and collect and yeah there there have been games that have done that for me but for some reason mmos like there's there's not a single fun thing about it for me, so it's it just why even bother? Because usually with games like that where you're collecting stuff, it's like, well, it's fun to jump around, so mm. you know at least I get to do that, or like, oh, it's fun to, you know, get into a, a heated battle and it feels really intense and like you might lose, and then level up from that, and that that's like the driving force. But with MMOs, I just I don't know, like nothing about it is fun. I don't like fighting in it. I don't like walking around the world. <clears throat> I like guess, like, uh, with MMOs, too, it's, like, you're you're limited more in what you can do because there's so many people playing, while with a single-player RPG, there's a lot more leeway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm sure they're trying to find out ways to crack that. I've heard, like, Final Fantasy, uh, the MMO is, like, a little more open-ended. Um, yeah, I've heard that, too. Which, like, sounds interesting, but I know for a fact, like, once I get in... You know, it's, like... I, I tried EverQuest out when it was first, and then and I was like, "Oh, never again!" And for a while, I didn't. Um, and then uh, the f- one of the friends that was like way into EverQuest, um, who I'm still in contact with, uh, he was since I'd moved to California, he still lived in Florida. Uh, we we didn't like talk super a lot, but mm. we had a conversation on the phone, and he was like, "Oh, this game Guild Wars is coming out, Guild Wars 2. and I was like, "Oh man." I was like, well, maybe we should play it together. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we should play it. Like, day it comes out, let's, like, do it together and, like, make our characters and, and play it. And I was like, yeah. And he was, like, explaining to me all the things about it that were cool. And I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Let, yeah, let's do that. Like, cool. Um, and so, like, it came out and I bought it. And then we were, like, I think we were on Skype together. And we were just, like, you know, playing it and making our characters and starting out and stuff. And I'm like, oh, so how do you do this? And he's like, oh, it's easy. You do this. And, <clears throat> you know, we're going through all these different little missions. And then, like after maybe like two or three hours, I was I was like I was playing it with him, and I was like, "Hey man, so when does when does the game like start?" And and he was like, and he was like "Oh, this this is the game, man. Like we're we're playing. Like we've been, we've been playing for the last like hour and a half." And I'm and I was like, 
really? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like exactly as I feared. Like I was just hating it the whole time, and I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "All right, I guess, I guess we're not doing this then." Like you go ahead and have fun with it. I'm not gonna bring it down. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it's just. I think a lot of it's uh, the people you play it with too. Because like for me, MMOs, I always play them with other people I want to have fun with. Like, if I play it alone, I just get bored. But, like, Guild Wars, I played with Jesse, and that was really fun, and we leveled up together. And then we hit max level, and I was like, all right, what are we going to do now? And he's like, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe PvP, I guess. And I was like, yeah. And then I just stopped playing. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> it's just one of those. And then even in WoW, like, I always just play WoW when my friends are playing, and then they stop playing, and I'm like, well... All right then. It's just like there's nothing to do. Yeah, I mean that's 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 like Overwatch. Oh, excuse me, that's like Overwatch for me. It's like I won't I won't really like solo queue or anything. I'll I'll make sure I have like a couple people with me that mm-hmm. we can play together. Um, but it's like, but at least with Overwatch, it's still like if I did solo queue, I'd still have a good time because I'd be like practicing or whatever, mm-hmm. like getting better. Yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> I I always feel like I fall into a trap with like talking about MMOs just because I don't like them. Uh, like I, yeah, I, I get what. I, yeah, I get what the appeal is, and I and I don't necessarily think anybody's like dumb for liking them or anything. I just I just don't personally like them. Yeah, I mean that's fine. It's like that with any genre. Like there's a lot of genres I just get really bored playing that other people are like this is the best or even uh like old school <laughs> platformers. I always love old school platformers, and then uh, a lot of people just hate it. Like the camera's bad, and I'm like, that's part of the charm. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's also just because there's like a there's definitely like a polarity to um, views on the internet. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I've, I've lived I've lived so much of my life, like more than half of it now, completely on the internet, um, and. Uh, expressing opinions about video games is very polarizing mm. like it, it I, I don't understand how still to this day it's not like acceptable to just be like i don't like this game <laughs> yeah. or like well it's it's a good game though and it's like well that's subjective <laughs> <laughs> you hate all good games <laughs> i cannot like this one even if you think it's good i don't you know mm-hmm. like what constitutes a good anything um well, that makes me curious as to, like, uh, how YouTube has changed you. Because I know just from making videos and doing this as my job for so long, uh, it kind of makes playing games not as fun in a way. Or you almost feel like you should be recording it at times. Or it's just, it changes you s- mentally some way. Have you, like, noticed that as well? Well, I think that comes, I think that comes from somewhere else. Um... Because I, I, I think with something that's inherently um, doing something like YouTube is self motivating, right? Like if you're going to a job, like you need to, and you have a boss, and um, but if you're building a company, um, which is so much of what doing a YouTube channel is, is is building up your own thing. It's it, you have to be self motivated, so you have to have a drive to want to work. Um, and, and accomplish things. So I, I think people who are in that position more often than not get into a mode of like, well, using my time should be an efficient process. So like I, I should be working and if I'm not working, I'm wasting time mm-hmm. um, because, you know, my time equals the growth of this, whatever this is, whether it's a business or a brand or a you know channel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't think that's in I don't think that's inherent to making a gaming channel. I think it's broader. I think it's inherent to making building anything that you build and you're responsible for, right? Because mm-hmm. because when it sort of rides on your shoulders, it's like, well, how dare I take a break when yeah. you know I could be building this up more, and I know that I could be spending my time to do that stuff. I think that's something that everybody. Uh, well, not everybody, but more often than not, people experience, and it's—I certainly did. Um, so, yes, <laughs> to answer <laughs> yeah. your question. Um, but, but, but again, I don't think it was from 
it being a gaming channel, like I had, I, it, it wasn't just that I was having problems like playing games for fun. It was also like, you know, going out or, uh, traveling or, you know, reading or all, all the other stuff I liked or like listening to music or anything or drawing even for my own, mm -hmm. um, fun. Uh, it always had to be about work. So, um, that was, that was some personal issues I had to work out for myself because I, I associated, um, uh, my my personal value through my work, so I didn't I didn't inherently like like myself or or think that uh, I had value on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I quantified my value by my work. So uh, when I wasn't working, I felt useless, um, and that's not that's not a healthy place to be in. So mm -hmm. I, di I did a lot of personal work on that. And now I feel like I'm at a point where I can be comfortable just sort of being like, well, I need a break today. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do anything. Fuck it. <laughs> That's cool. I think everybody needs to learn to do that as well, especially or just in any job, really. I mean, I know some people will be like, I got to not stop work because I need blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, it's like everybody just needs to kind of chill out every once in a while. Yeah, and, exactly. And it's like, uh, especially, and I think a lot of, ways people chill out is just watching videos or watching streams or whatever it may be because i get so many people are just like yeah like you're just helping me sleep or you're helping me like i'm drawing as i listen to this and stuff like that oh yeah but i, I also think there's definitely um there's a difference because there's there's sort of like the i don't feel like uh doing something that wastes time is is genuine rest because uh, it's not like feeding any sort of need for for you. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you're like on your phone, you know, it's like you have four hours free, and you're like, oh yeah, man, I'm just gonna like browse the internet, and then it sort of oh, melts yeah. away, and you're like, oh well, what did I do? I was on Reddit and Facebook and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, I had some time off, but was I really doing something that like fed any sense of who I am or what I want? Um, you know, you could have spent that four hours playing a game that you really enjoy or like, you know, letting out some creativity with drawing that doesn't have to do anything with work or, mm. um, you know, or, or reading a book that I really like or something, you know, like, yeah, I feel like those things are a little more fulfilling than just sort of wasting time. And, yeah. there's, and, and there is like a there's a difference, at least for me, where um Whenever I whenever I go on those kind of sprees of like watching YouTube videos or something that have sort of nothing to do with anything that I'm interested in, I I just end up a little more depressed or angry or just in a bad mood in general. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think part of that's because uh, when you're doing that, in a way, it's kind of uh, laziness kind of taking over. Like I could go. Put, like do something I enjoy but I could just sit here and watch this thing and kind of for because it's easier and yeah. I think that's part of it it's just your brain wanting to take the easy way yeah it's passive it's not it's not active mm -hmm. um and I mean sometimes you need that but I don't feel like you need or at least anybody needs um you know like over an hour of that you know mm -hmm. I feel like your brain gets that from sleep right yeah <laughs> Um, and when you wake up, like it's cool, it's it's good to be active. And and I think the hardest part about it is just uh, just the beginning of it, because choosing to do something is is kind of a stressful uh, endeavor, right? Like, hmm. what, am I, what am I going to do with my time? Is is such a hard question to answer when there are so many things to do. Hmm. Uh, but once, but once at least for me, when I'm in it. I I'm like oh this is easy now like I'm I'm into it I'm doing this I'm interested now I want to get to the end of this I want to finish this I want to learn more or whatever yeah so. I mean uh, I read a while ago I forget what it was but it was like you just spend five minutes doing something uh, it's like the best way to get started doing something so like uh, I would always if I needed to clean or exercise or even just make a video or whatever it is it's just like all right. I'm only going to do it for five minutes. And when you tell your brain that, you trick it into doing it. And then it's like, oh, this is easy. And then you just keep doing it past the five minutes. Oh, that's interesting. 
Yeah, because it's your brain inherently. You're just like, well, I got to do this thing and that thing. Like, it overloads, and it's like, I'll just look at the internet more. And instead, you're like, no, just go, uh, just go exercise for five minutes. And then you end up exercising for like an hour because you start doing it, and you're like, wow, this isn't too bad. This is easy, and I feel good. And then you just keep going. Shit, that's a good, that's a good little, uh, that's like mind hack, dude. <laughs> you can buy my book, Mind Hacks, on Amazon. <laughs> dude, you're like Johnny Mnemonic, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just need to write a bunch of like self help books. They're all they're all just like to get better in your life. Just here's my five easy tips. And they're just like think positive. And it's like every single book just tells you to think positive. Yeah, well, that's like the hackneyed way to write like a self help book, right? Like, mm-hmm. like if 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 you were to write a self help book about that topic, right, or or, or anyone. It would be like the 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 five minute plan, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it would be like this book that's you know, fucking an inch thick. <laughs> yeah. But like, that would be the only substance in it would be like, <laughs> yeah. just do something for five minutes and then keep doing it. And then it would be a bunch of fluff about like, Oh, you know, but it's the, the think, think about it before you do, because you know, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's like some stories from people throwing in like uh, Johnny really loves doing nothing, but then the five minute plan just changed his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you would think, based on the story that we told in the last 100 pages, that he wouldn't do it, but he did. <laughs> and you can too. Uh, so, so, having said that, do you draw a lot now just for fun? Um, no, uh, and and that's not. It, it's just because I haven't had time. Like uh, mm. things have been pretty crazy lately. Like we just, especially in the last couple months, um, I did a. Uh, spent a month filming a, a YouTube bread show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then immediately after that went on tour. And then I've been touring throughout the last year. Um, and then because of, because of all that, like we have to work like double or triple time on the channel because, you know, we're not around for a month or two weeks at a time. So we have to have episodes for um, game grumps. And then also there's there's various side projects for the channel that I have to sort of manage or um, be a part of. And that also takes time. So I just, uh, I haven't really had a, a chance to like say, because for me, like, it's tough for me to just like sit down and be like, oh, I'm going to draw. Like, I, I have to be like, mm-hmm. today's the day that I draw a bunch of shit. Um, and, and that just works for me. Like. Because I think a lot of people sometimes are like, well, I have to do it every day or I get rusty. But for me, like, if I if I just warm up for an hour, um, then it all comes back. And mm-hmm. then I and then I can start being satisfied with the drawings that I'm making. Um, so that's that's how my creativity works. And I have to be in a zone and, you know, I don't like to be bothered or uh, interrupted when I'm when I'm doing it. Um so like I haven't really had days like that, um, you know. I'll, I'll work all day and I'll come home and I'll I'll just want to like spend time with my family or my cats or my wife or, uh, you know, enjoy a movie or something. Because mm-hmm. uh, if 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 I start if I were to start drawing when I got home. I would just get into it and I would stay up till like 5 a.m. just drawing. Yeah. Because that's just how I function. Um, I can't just like do a doodle and then be like, all right, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So th- the answer is no, but uh, recently actually it, it has been shifting because I sort of made that choice. Um, b- because of the way that I function, I, I really did have to make the choice to be like, well, this day I'm dedicating to drawing. And that was that was something that I was doing sort of frequently like last year and the beginning of this year, but it was always the day that got like sort of rescheduled because like other stuff came up. Mm-hmm. Like it was the it was the least important priority, right? And I was like, well, you know, I don't have to. That was just something for me. Yeah. And if this is more important, then I can reschedule. Um but this year it's like, no, this is actually really important to me. <laughs> and I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. reschedule. So um, there's a bunch of drawings that like I, I, I had promised to people that I'm working on right now. Uh, and then after that, it's just going to be all about um, this cartoon I'm working on. Uh, just because, I don't know, it's been like four years since I've had a project that's mine. 
You know, ever since mm. I was ever since I was like twelve, everything I made was just from my brain, and you know, maybe I'd show it to people and they'd like comment on it or whatever. But for the most part, it was always mine. And for the last four years, everything I've done has been collaborate has been a collaboration, um, which is cool. But it's just there, there's. I don't know, just because because of the way I came up creatively, like it doesn't scratch an itch. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. Because I did the same thing with like machinima stuff. Because that's how I got started. And there's like this good feeling that you don't get from anything else about creating something and like writing and voicing and doing all that, and then putting yeah. it up there and having people enjoy it and being like, "Wow, I did that." Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's not just animation for me. It could be anything, but. Um, animation and, and drawing is just something I know how to do and I'm confident in doing. It's, mm. it's the only thing that like when I, cause I have a million projects in my head or, or whatever that I could do. But whenever I think about any of them, I get like scared and I'm like, Ooh, I don't, Ooh, I'm intimidated. I don't really know <laughs> how I would go about doing that. But with a cartoon, I'm like, I know exactly how I do this. So mm. it, it's sort of comfortable for me to like go back into and, and, uh, and try. Cause I think there's sort of this, sense of like like my true nature is that I'm an animator and it's like not true at all mm -hmm. it was just the thing that I did that people liked the most and I was like <laughs> oh I'll just, I'll just keep doing that then yeah um because like before Metal Gear Awesome like I was writing music I was illustrating like pinups and I was uh the fuck else was I doing god <laughs> writing writing stories and uh, editorials and stuff yeah so, so it's like you're not just a one trick pony or something yeah um but that's i, I mean you know that's that's the popular perception is but plus it just makes for like a a negative narrative and in, in people who want to be critical's mind you know like we gave up art to play video games on the <laughs> internet like what a sellout and it's like well you know <laughs> cartoons are hard and kind of YouTube unrewarding at times like five dollars <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like oh you worked a lot harder than the other thing here's uh one a hundredth of the money yeah me meanwhile here's a project that you know bought me a house and is able to give all of my closest best friends everything they've ever wanted in terms of opportunity so they can like live out their fucking dreams of like it's like i'm helping produce a cartoon right now yeah. With, uh, with Ross and uh, and a video game, um, so like <laughs> it, it just seems like a no brainer. Yeah, I mean, in the end of things, it allows you to do the things you want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. yeah. If, if I was like continuing animating or whatever, it's like I would never. I'd, I'd be fucking miserable. I'll tell you that, and mm -hmm. I'd probably be a recluse, um, and. Uh, I wouldn't have had this YouTube Red show, which, you know, it's like worked with Jesse and Michelle, fucking Dan Harmon. Um, and that was that was I mean, that's an incredible experience. I'm doing voiceover work professionally now uh, mm -hmm. just because because a lot of people were fans of Game Grumps, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of cartoonists. And that's another thing that was that was interesting about um, the transition from animation to Let's Playing is that like there were a lot of. Let's players at the time when I started Game Grumps, um, but because I had the reputation I had and people already sort of liked me, they were like, "Oh, a bunch of animators immediately got into Game Grumps because they they liked me." Um, and I would talk about stuff that I guess animators were interested in on the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, and then I started doing Game Grumps animated, and then that sort of spawned the whole fan making game Grumps animated thing which i think was like relatively new like i'd seen i mean the idea i got from it was because like people would animate moments of podcasts or yeah or, like shorties watching shorties like we got uh, our animator for cox and crendor from he's just a fan that did it and we were like dude you're really good and then i just paid him yeah exactly um but i i feel like there was there was a moment where i was like I was interested in, in, in this concept of it, right? Like in our fan base and how like creative they were. And I was like, okay. And so I Googled game grumps, like Google image search game grumps. And there was like a ton of fan art. 
and it was all like super creative and cool. And then I Googled PewDiePie, who was like, you know, 10 times more successful and popular mm. than we are. And it was just, there, there was no, I mean, there was fan art, but like, it just was not even close to the scope of, of creativity and quality that, that our fan art was at. And I was mm. like, oh man, this is very special. Um, so I take a lot of pride in that and the fact that like, you know, I've been to animation meetups or, uh, you know, animation conventions or talks or even just like places where there's animators and people will come up to me who be like, hey man, I'm, a, I'm like the head animator on this fucking Cartoon Network show and like I watch Game Grumps when I'm working because it's like, I love you guys and it like helps me stay focused and I'm just like, fuck, that's awesome. <laughs> That is such a cool thing because it's like you get you have such a big animator crowd. It's like you have so many talented people. Just even they don't even care if they're like getting paid to do animation and stuff. They're just doing it for fun. It's like a hobby. Yeah, exactly. And 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 you can't really discount. Well, I can't really discount that. Like even even if like I was doing Game Grumps for a hundred years and then I died and like I wasn't satisfied with it or anything, you know, like mm-hmm. which is not true, but just as an example for people that would say like, Oh, I'm selling out because I'm moving from animation. <laughs> it's like the, the value that I added to the animation community with, with that, you know, is, is, is worth it to me. Um, mm-hmm. to say like, I was, I was an aid towards helping animators like stay focused or be inspired or whatever. And, and particularly with game, game groups animated, it was since I started it, at the very beginning of, of Game Grumps, I was like, I want this to be like a, a once a week thing or something. Because mm-hmm. um, that's how we did it when we started was we would show up in the morning, we'd do Game Grumps, and then John would edit, and then I would do a Game Grumps animated um, while he was editing. And, uh, and so I did like three of those, and then it sort of started blowing up, and it was, you know, things changed a little bit, and we hired an editor, but... Uh, that was the goal from the beginning was to do like regular animated and then uh, once it started growing I was like oh there's so many fan ones I want to get other people involved so I can ex- get them exposure you know because these gamers animated get so many views mm-hmm. um, but there was just no way to financially feasibly do that and then there was a point where it got to there and I was like oh well now let's do it so I was like alright every week I'm going to get some animator on and and it, it it's acted sort of as a as a rolodex, which is something that I'm super proud of. I've had people come to me for professional work, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we want you to animate this thing." And I'm like, "Well, I I'm certainly way too busy to do this, but I have this fucking immense rolodex of animators that yeah. I could get you in contact with to to do this project." Just look down this list of Game Grumps Animated, like check out the thumbnails, watch the videos, and whoever you like, uh, I'll, I will get you in contact with. Um, and that's happened many times. So that's also something that's very, very cool about that whole process. That is really cool, especially because now a lot of people are looking for animators just for even things as small as Twitch emotes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, music videos and... Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean the, the whole landscape's changed in terms of you know uh, entertainment and how to make money or even sell a product like because there was no way for anybody to have accessibility to any sense of like advertising you know 20 30 years ago mm-hmm. so you had to buy an ad or you know images of people standing on the street set, handing out their mixtapes to strangers you know that was the, yeah. that was the that was the end of it. But if you make like one cool idea and get it seen by the right people, like it can explode. And I've seen so many careers, um, you know, music or comedy or otherwise come up from the internet because of, of Reddit or Facebook or whatever, because they had like one good idea that was really shareable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that exposed them. I mean, you look at like Bo Burnham or even fucking Justin Bieber, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. They were all it's discovered true. from the internet. Um, and the same thing goes for for our band, Starbomb and NSP. Like we, we can fully produce these music videos on our own, and they inherently have value, so people watch them. 
And then that acts as the advertising to sell the albums. And we don't, we're still don't have a label. Um, so you can just, you can build something on your own and, and use the, the assets that you have, which are many. Um, and, it, and it's kind of a shame because I can see the landscape changing a little bit to be less conducive to that. Um, yeah. But I think there will be another shift. Because, um, like, you know, Facebook is like, oh, well, the timeline is all about the things that people pay for now. And, yeah. Uh, say, the same thing Twitter is doing that, too. and Even YouTube with the paid promotion. Yeah, stuff, exactly. Like, on the front page. Yeah, and, like, the, the stuff that you're seeing more and more on front page is, like, Jimmy Kimmel and <laughs> yeah. the sports thing that happened or whatever. Or a movie um, trailer. But I think, I, I think there's always places for, there's always a place for, Things like Reddit or um, <laughs> Dig. <I don't> know. <laughs> trying to think of, to think of better examples, uh, but that you know people still share stuff that they just like, um, yeah. and there's still still be like blogs and you know even even YouTubers like they're they're still they're still hanging around, you know even though even though ad apocalypse is happening right now and it's like less lucrative than ever to get into YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's people are still hanging around and doing it because it's fun why not you know yeah um and so like those people have a lot of power in promoting things and and helping other artists make a living out of it so i'm curious as to like having done this for as long as you have what's like some of the main lessons you've kind of learned over the years just from doing youtube like for example i learned uh that a lot of people that everybody just looks up to or idolizes like they're just people and that's like the more youtubers and streamers and just whoever that i meet it's like yeah dude they're just they're people and so i see celebrities just in general in a different light at this point just from doing youtube um yeah yeah i know i know exactly what you're talking about and i experienced that a lot with um when when like uh, fans will come up to me at like a Barnes and Noble or something, or, mm-hmm. you know, even if we do a live show, you know, they're like shaking and, and it's like, I, I get it. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly no judgment. I mean, if I met someone that I loved, I would be in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just kind of like, I don't know what you're like, from my point of view, it's so obvious. Like, you know, it's like, you're, you're you're just a dude just like me and you're coming up to me to say hi like there's no if you, <laughs> in, in your mind it's like i have to impress him and i have to make an impact and say the things i want to say and oh this is so much pressure but to me it's just like oh hi yeah sure <laughs> yeah. i'll take i'll take a picture that's cool um so uh th- there's that aspect to it i forgot where i was going with this uh well, yeah, it's like it's they know everything about you, and then to you, they're just some random person being like, "Hello," and you're like, "Uh, hello." Oh, right. <laughs> Talking about that we're just a person. Um, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I, you know, I feel like that is a, a narrative that's that's sort of being told um, by by YouTubers about themselves and other people, and, and and you know, not just YouTubers, but people who are a celebrity in any certain facet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there is, there's is a little bit of like not truth about that too. Um, be, because being in this line of work and sort of being judged every day, uh, and having people like talk about you constantly or talk at you. Um, like there's a reality to it, right? Like, yeah, what you're saying is the source of the problem, right? Like if everybody considered us as normal human beings, none of this would happen, but it does. And I don't Mm -hmm. think it's ever going away. So the, the the symptom is what I'm talking about. Um, of like, well, the reality is that is going on. And, and, you know, it's like, I, I could go on V on 4chan right now and read some horrible shit about me, you know? And yeah, what people, what really mean people think about me, and that, and that would be very depressing and upsetting. Mm. Um, uh, so life is a little bit different for us, and there, even people who are very positive about, you know, what I do in my life have completely wrong 
ideas of like who I am and uh, what I do and my core values and stuff. And, and that can be very frustrating as well. Uh, so, so it is, a, uh, it is a little different, um, because I've been in it for so long and so many of these people have been in it for so long mm-hmm. that, uh, actions, actions that I would do that are no brainers that are completely positive, that are productive and helpful could be viewed as the complete opposite just because of how, how we're perceived. Right. And, and there's so many things where I have to be on my toes constantly because so much of my career hinges on that people like me, Mm -hmm. um, that many, many, many people like me. And if I make one misstep like that could all explode and collapse. Um, And I'm not saying that that like keeps me up at night or really informs my decisions, but there's always, yeah, there's always an aspect of it to everything that you do. Like if I do an action, it's usually for myself or for the benefit of the people in my life. But when it comes down to like announcing it or, um, you know, it, it has to become public in one way or another because it changes how a show is made or something. Then, it, then it's like there's a whole different aspect of messaging. And um, to me, I've always been a pr- major supporter of honesty. Like I think I always think honesty is the best way to go about things. Um, but I've found in this in this line of work that it can be tough um, because with honesty. It, it can be really hard to be honest about things that most people don't understand mm-hmm. that if I were honest about certain things that it would come with just, you know, hours and hours and hours of explanation of like why this is the way it is or whatever. Because if I were to just say the thing that I was being honest about, um, it would get misunderstood like right away. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Like this is how, my life is and the things that I have to go through and the things that, um, so that's not to say like I've, I've, I've like lied about anything. Um, but Mm -hmm. like it, that's one of the challenges that I have to face is like, I want to be honest about these things. Uh, but it's just tough in certain circumstances. Um, and I wish I could think of an example, but I can't really, I'm just saying, saying. yeah. uh, Um, Like for, I mean, it could be on a much simpler scale, like just being honest about MMOs. Like, you know, you're going to get a lot of people are like, I agree with you. And then people are like, you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. And there's also the, the what's tricky is also the duality of like comedy versus honesty, because I can I can sit down and talk to you here and it's very casual and I can be very um, neutral about things like that. Like when mm-hmm. I talk about MMOs or whatever, I can be like, well, you know, I don't like it and my friends like it and I get it and this and that. And, mm-hmm. but you know, doing a comedy show where it's like 10 minutes a day and I have to pack the content in, it's like that gets reduced to for the sake of comedy and for the sake of the flow of the show, it gets reduced to like, yeah, fucking MMOs, bleh, you know, <laughs> and, and then over dramatization. Yeah, exactly. And, and people sort of get the wrong impression, but like, you know, of of course they would get that impression. Why wouldn't they get that impression? Mm-hmm. That's the impression that I gave them. So that there's sort of that duality that's that's a struggle for. Um, but I always have to remind myself that people people are familiar with the the show version of me, the the version that I'm putting out there on the show, and that's and that can be very interesting when I'm doing live shows or tours or whatever, and people come up to me and say and consistently say, you know, I, oh, I thought you would like this, you know, or like, you know, I always thought you were like this or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> oh, that's, that's interesting that so many people think that. And that's not at all how I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've totally gotten that. Like you're so much nicer in person and, and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. you know, a lot so, of people oh, yeah. thought that with, uh, like total biscuit. They'll always ask me, like, oh, is TB really angry or stuff? I'm like, no, dude, he's just he's a nice guy. 
Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> say that that's actually one that I get a lot is like, wow, you're so chill. And it's like, we, well, well, yes, I, I actually don't get angry at anything really. <laughs> um, and, and I've, I've had many people tell me that like, I'm, it's scary when I get angry because it's so rare. So they know when I get angry, something's very serious and something's going on. Meanwhile, you know, the show's fucking called Game Grumps and every, <laughs> Every moment of the show, I'm like, ah, this is ah, and I'm throwing the <laughs> controller or whatever. Um, but, you know, obviously it comes, obviously it's real, it's just exaggerated. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but that's just performance. So that's that's another interesting aspect to this industry. Yeah, it's um, like it's all, most personas are either just really hyped up or... It's kind of over dramatized a bit just for entertainment purposes, or people just become a completely different person. And it's like yeah. one of those. Um, but that's, uh, yeah. I, what was the original question? It was. Oh, it was, uh, like what you've specific. learned from YouTube, uh, just oh, throughout yeah. the years, just from being on it and growing with it. <sighs> Man. That's a really interesting question because there's so much. Yeah, because you um, grow as a person as well uh, while you're doing all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, fuck. I've been making cartoons since, like, 2003. Yeah. So, so that's, like, what, 15? Fuck. I don't even know. I think I mean released Metal Gear Awesome in, like, 2008 or something. I don't even fucking remember. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much change. And, uh... And actually, to to call back to something we were talking about earlier is that like I think the biggest thing that I learned was was a sense of of like self appreciation, um, because when when I was exposed to a format where you know I was releasing my work regularly and it was getting you know immediate feedback, both positive and negative, mm-hmm. um, it, it was so it was so easy for me to perceive my value as attached to this like I remember I remember there were points in my life where like I had I had met somebody through some kind of networking or whatever that I really admired or whatever and I really wanted to work with or get to know or whatever and I and I would just hold off contacting them until I had like a next new thing out because by the time I was doing that I was like in between projects and and uh, the last thing I released like I wasn't proud of anymore and I was like, "Oh, this next thing is going to be amazing." And I would just, I would just like wait it out until the next thing came out because I was like, "Well, I, I just look like a fucking, I look like a douche if I'm, <laughs> you know." There, there, there was no sense of like, "I'm, I'm important on my own and interesting on my own." My mm-hmm. work has to speak for me. Um, and learning to get out of that mindset was was very difficult and was something I think YouTube sort of pushed me along on because I was so there were times where I was so chronically unhappy that I was like, why, why do I feel this way? Like, why, why am I so unhappy when like, look at this. And that's another thing too, is that there's, there's this, uh, it's very easily, easy to be shamed. Um, Hmm. because YouTube is so cool and fun and interesting and you, you meet all kinds of cool people. And it's like, you know, obviously the, the fun factor of different channels varies, but like, look at what I do. I play video games all day. Mm-hmm. Um, you and get people paid. that are like, I wish I could do that. You should. Yeah, be it, it, yeah. It's like I'm a fucking plumber, and I fucking hate my job. And like, well, how 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 are you unhappy? And it's like, yeah, it's it's so easy to be shamed by that idea. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I think also coming to terms with that of of being like, well, you know, everybody has their own struggles, and I think we as people are we're problem solvers. Like there's always going to be, our, our brains are just like hardwired to find issues and then react accordingly. Mm-hmm. And solving the problem brings us happiness and joy. Um, so any circumstance, even like the highest level of fucking a millionaire, it's like you hear about fucking millionaires who are depressed. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how could you be depressed? It's like, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> happiness isn't bought. Maybe happiness isn't, uh, yeah, the, 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 I think that was a huge lesson I learned was was like everything growing up when I was 
poor and I was eating ramen every day or mac and cheese and I was living out of my friend's living room in his shitty apartment in Oviedo. Mm. Uh, I, was, I was like, yeah, man, one day when I, you know, I'm, I'm making a bunch of money, like I'm going to be happy and I'm going to, everything's going to be cool. And meanwhile, I flashed back to those times and it was great because I was like hanging out with my friends and like building something and, mm. you know, we were, we were seeing each other all the There was a camaraderie. Um, and then flash forward to some of like the worst times in the past couple of years. And I'm just like, it doesn't even compare. Like I was way happier back then. Um, mm. Well, I think money can bring comfort and that can lead to you being happy, but it can't really give you happiness. It just can give you tools to help you get happy a little bit easier, maybe less stress. Like, oh, I don't have to worry about my bills this month or something like that. Yeah, so it's, it's exactly. It's more of a comfort thing. Yeah. But again, we're, we're problem solvers, right? So like there is a sense of satisfaction that comes from the struggle of having to pay those bills, you know, and then like mm-hmm. making it and being like, Oh, I did it. You know, fucking, this is great. Like I accomplished something and I'm going to fucking take a load off and I'm going to hang out with my friends and just celebrate, you know, like that's, that's a high. And I'm, I'm not like, and this is the problem too. Is like even though I just said that, I'm 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 imagining the the comments of like he oh, doesn't have to worry about Bill. Yeah, like, well, I'm it's not fun, you know. And it's like I get it. I was there, you know. But like mm. I can think back to that and remember like I got the paycheck and I paid it off and I was like yes, you know, what an accomplishment. I'm fucking great. I feel great. Um, I'm in a great mood. I'm gonna hang out with my friends. I'm gonna do something cool. Um, I remember that feeling, and I'm sure everybody's experienced that feeling too. Um, and there's a lot of value in that. So that that was a big thing for me was getting a lot of self help and learning uh, that life was more about uh, finding happiness with with it from within. You know. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so moving off of that, like super deep topic uh, <laughs> i got one more question for you yeah okay and it's what's something that you still want to accomplish like in your life or that you want to have happen in the future like like how people are like i want to write a novel i want to do this like what's something that you still want to do oh man there's a ton of stuff um there, there's a ton of stuff uh <laughs> Uh, I want to, I mean, selfishly, mm-hmm. I want to, uh, produce a cartoon that I'm spearheading, which is going to start happening this year. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm going to tr- make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted to write a book, a story. Um, and it doesn't have to be a book. It could be anything, but there's a story in mind that I've wanted to write for a while that I just it would be impossible to do without like millions of dollars. So I was just going to write a book. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, unselfishly, uh, oh, and, and selfishly, I want to learn to make ramen. That's been the (laughs) huge thing recently. Yeah. I, I, you know, I have this fucking like, it's funny. I didn't, I, I I had this concept before I saw the movie ramen girl. (laughs) Like I explained it. I was like, I want to move to Japan for like a year and just like apprentice or something, which is very, very difficult. And it was like very naive as a foreigner to say, but like, um, I was like, yeah, I mean, I want to fucking like go to the ramen school in Osaka and like learn to make ramen and come home and just be a fucking like ramen master or whatever. (laughs) But I told that to my wife and she was like, Oh, that's the plot of ramen girl. And I was like, what? (laughs) And then we watched it. It's a terrible movie, but like, yeah. It's, it's, um, but anyway, uh, th- that and but unselfishly, like, I want to. Um, there's two main things. I I, I want to start a charity for um, art students who can't afford art school. Uh, oh, that's really cool. So, you know, kids who are already good artists and they want to you know, explore learning art more and they can't afford it. So uh, I would find ways to fund that. I don't, I don't know how charities work, but that's something I've always wanted to do because 
like I said, with like Game Grumps Animated and with the Cutie Saturday hashtag on Twitter, like it brings me immense satisfaction to uh, help out other artists um, by exposing the world to their art or giving them work or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, and same with our merch too. Like with our merch, we've always always reached out to fans um, who are, you know, not like super successful you know like there have been times where like we've we've had people we've worked with and they've like gotten to a point where they're very comfortable and we're like oh let's find somebody else <laughs> like who's, who's who's struggling you know like you're yeah. you're you're in a good spot like well um it's good um i don't want that to sound mean but like yeah it's just, it's just more important to me to be like supporting somebody who needs it mm-hmm. uh uh and then also as like a the the grand plan is I I want to I want to develop a school system that teaches all of the things that are important um, because I, I I think the school system currently as it is 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 very very not helpful at all mm-hmm. um, I think it's horrible to say the least and. Yes. I, I had to do so much of – it was like in in singing or in like uh, bodybuilding, there's a thing where the, the commonly uh, – the common ways or patterns that people fall into are harmful. And like the longer you wait to learn to sing or to learn to bodybuild correctly – uh, the harder it is to do because you fall into these patterns that actually hurt um, improvement. So like the way that we speak or whatever, the, the common way that people speak is the wrong way. The common way that people breathe is the wrong way. Um, so you have to unlearn that stuff and then learn the right way to do it. And that's what I feel like school is right now is, and it was a huge struggle with me in life is like, you know, falling into this serendipitous situation where I had this business and, um, I had no idea how to manage it. I had no idea how to, uh, you know, make the best of it or I had no idea how to do fucking simple things like pay my taxes or, yeah, or, um, invest or, uh, anything. Like I didn't know anything, you know, they don't teach any stuff that's actually important in school. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, learning math and ABCs is very important, but like, I, I don't need to learn about Christopher Columbus. Like I, I can do that on my own time. Yeah. Um, if I'm interested, the important shit is practicality type things. And it, and even down to like things that people would be like, Oh, like learning how to speak to people. Like I can't, it, it blows my mind that that's not a course mm-hmm. and it's required. Like how to have a conversation with people. There's so many people that I encounter on a daily basis. And I'm like, how, how is it not required to learn how to speak to another human being that's like quintessential to our existence on earth is to communicate with one another and nobody teaches you how to do it especially at younger ages yeah exactly um stuff like that uh, buying a house how to do that how to invest how to do your taxes how to um you know how to read better how to uh keep your body healthy um you know nutrition like none of that is required in school it's it's like extracurricular it, it, at at best um so i would i would want to develop a school system it's just a privatized school system that that would be uh like send your kids here and they will learn how to be functioning adults <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and and be able to like make something out of themselves and even to the point of like like not not like in a religious sense but like buddhist sensibilities of like how to maintain happiness you know like how to mm-hmm. is, how is that not a that's quintessential to life you know like fucking being happy how, how how is that not a requirement to learn? Like, yeah. How how to be happy? Like, it's it seems like such a no brainer, and yet it's it's like, why would you teach that in school? And it's like, <laughs> it's because why why wouldn't you? I don't know. Um, 
and even simple things like how to dress, you know, how how to uh, all that stuff you don't learn, and 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 the cruel the cruelest part of it all is that like all a lot of those things are things that you would be ridiculed for for not knowing, mm-hmm. you know, like people get ridiculed for dressing incorrectly or, or or not being able to talk to people or not knowing this or that about something that's so like. Everybody needs to know this. It's like, well, if everybody needs to know it, then why didn't they fucking teach it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's very so, true. Yeah. So that, that's that's the lofty goal, which um, I think is possible. It just takes a lot of effort and time, um, which I don't have right now. So I can't really focus on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of but maybe like a life goal in general. Yeah. Maybe like uh, after like a retirement thing or something, I would, I would start looking into that. Um, mm-hmm. And I know there are organizations that like that around the world. I heard there was one in Europe that I haven't looked into yet that's, that's similar to that. Um, but uh, as, as sort of a precursor to it, I was going to um, I was going to write a book uh, very soon uh, called um, "An Open Letter to My 15 Year Old Self." Uh, that was basically just like everything that I know now that I wish I knew when I was 15 that would have made my life so much easier. Uh, and uh, th- th- that's so that's another goal <laughs> of mine yeah. to, to do is to write that book um, that just to sort of stuff. just to lay out my thoughts on the matter and and sort of start a, a ground level of starting the bigger project. And also just to like help out some kids because the reason I thought of writing that book was because when we go on tour or we do panels or anything or we do meet and greets with with fans, one of the most common questions we get are advice questions Mm. Um, because we come off as people, I guess, on the show that seem like we have all our shit together, Um, which in some cases is true. But the questions that we get asked are like, almost no brainer questions or, or, or just questions. It's like, it's, it's a crime that you, you don't know how to deal with this. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, how do I deal with this situation in my life? It's like, that that's, it's terrifying that there are people walking around life carrying that on their shoulders and they have no idea. Um, so, in a lot of those circumstances, you know, we're on stage and we have to sort of com- condense what our answers are. So it's like, oh, wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of way to compile the best questions or compile the best uh, um, conversations like that and put it into a book or something? And, yeah, and it's yeah. like it's even sometimes with those things, like those people ask these like heartfelt, like serious questions. And then the next guy's like, I have a four part question. And the uh, first part is, who would win in a fight, a Coca-Cola can or Zelda? It's like, uh, yeah. all right. <laughs> There's definitely a diversity in that. One of my favorite things that we did on tour was, um, or th- that we experienced on tour was somebody stood up and they had a question, but they were like, hey, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm Kyle. This is my YouTube channel. Uh, you know, uh, cool, cool guy gamer. Uh, you can check it out at youtube.com slash cool guy gamer. Anyway, my question is. And then we just fucking like we're we're very kind to our fans um, (laughs) because we know how like hard it is to like stand up and and talk in front of people alone, let alone people that you really look up to. So Mm. we're we're usually very forgiving in situations or or supportive. But (laughs) that was like one of the only guys that we just fucking roasted. (laughs) Um, And and then the the whole audience got in on it. And I I feel a little bad because, you know, it's 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 also one of my. Uh, mantras that I say to people a lot is like use all of your opportunities Mm -hmm. like if you were if you were gifted with being a part of some kind of like society or group that has a lot of influence like use that Um, yeah if you're if you're trying to make it I think there's a there's a a sense of artists to be like hey um, I want to do everything on my own and I you know I don't want any help and stuff and it's like that's not how life works Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're social creatures we network we share we um so for, f- to not use the opportunities that you have is a crime i was i was talking to some girl uh 
she's not some girl. She's a very talented, <laughs> very, very amazing artist. Um, and I was, I was a big fan of, and she messaged me out of the blue one day and she was like, Hey, I, I just wanted some, I wanted some advice on, uh, making it cause I'm struggling right now. And you know, I don't know what to do. And I was like, Oh yeah. So tell me more about your situation. And she was like, yeah, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a living out of it. And it's just, it's just been tough. And like, uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And and then, you know, we were just talking about it. It was coming up with ideas and, and, and stuff. And then and then she just sort of offhandedly mentioned that she she has a million Instagram followers. <laughs> oh my God. And I was, I was like, what? <laughs> I don't even have a million Instagram followers. Like, that's, that's insane. How are, how are you struggling right now? And she's like, well, I don't like to use that because um, I feel like it's dirty. And it's like, how is it? There's a million people that said, like, I want to see what this person's doing. Yeah. It, those are people that are already interested in what you're... It's not It's not gross to, to be like, hey, here's something I'm passionate about because I need to fucking live my life and make money in order to exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, support me if you want. If not, I don't care. It literally takes two seconds to scroll through on your Instagram feed, you know, if you don't want to see that stuff, like it's, Mm -hmm. but that is such a common thought among artists is like, I don't want to take advantage of the opportunities I have. And it's like, you should. Yeah, absolutely should. Any opportunity that you have, if you know some famous director or whatever, and you're like, Oh, I'm afraid it's like, no, no. Those are the kind of people that are like happy to help. And, and it, I know it's tough to judge the situation because there are situations where it does feel gross. Um, but like, if it's just a little favor, it takes like no time at all. Like, why not? What What's the harm? You know, yeah, especially just asking. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, to get back to that kid, uh, I don't even remember what the point of that story was. It's was really funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we roasted the fuck out of that kid. And it was- <laughs> <laughs> That's like the equivalent of going in the comment section, just being like, "Here's my YouTube channel. Oh yeah, great vid." Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're just like um, blurting out your shameless promotion. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which which is fine, but it's just, it was just <laughs> it, it was just so funny the circumstances and like the confidence in which it was just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, check out my fucking awesome channel. Anyway. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, uh, I think we're, uh, I think we're coming to the end here. So we've been talking for an hour and a half. The time just flies by when you're having fun. Oh, damn. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, thank you for joining me. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me fucking ramble. I... <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I love listening to people ramble, which is probably part of the reason I enjoy doing this show. <laughs> well, that's it's very fortunate you're in that situation then, because there are. Some I wish I'd know. be in that situation. <laughs> I could you should, here. you should be lucky. <laughs> you got nothing to complain about. <laughs> uh, it's like, and then you do it for so long, you just become jaded to it after a while. But it's still kind of, it still kind of just digs into you. It just takes a lot more. Well. Uh, <laughs> to get into it, to get into it a little bit more, I guess. Uh, for for me, it's just figuring out like what, why I'm jaded. Like, what, yeah. am I not enjoying it anymore? Am I not? Uh, is it not giving me a sense of satisfaction anymore? What am I jaded about? Because um, it's so easy to just fall into it and be like, yeah, well, you know, it fucking sucks now. Mm-hmm. But like, examine it. Like, if something's bothering you, you should always examine it. Yeah. Um, that's that's the way I see it, uh, and uh, it always helps because sometimes it's like, oh wow, I am not enjoying it anymore. Maybe I should do something else. Yeah, um, I think that's that's true too because it's yeah. uh, it's easy to just get frustrated and flustered by so many things and then not really analyze why it's happening. Yeah, exactly. Well, plus it's scary, man. Like. The prospect of because I think a lot of people sort of have a, a sixth sense about, um, like they they know deep down that they don't like it and they don't want to make that examination because they know what they'll find. 
Mm-hmm. And and then the answer to that is something very tough, like I'd have to stop doing it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like imagine being in a situation where like this is my only livelihood, this is my only skill, this is my only um, trade or whatever, and this is making me good money or, you know, it's like keeping me up in this community or, you know, anything like that. And then you make the realization, I hate this and I'd rather be doing this. And you sort of have to hit the reset button and to to to, to drop it and do something else. You you'd have to hit the hit the reset button, and that's very difficult. Yeah, uh, you've seen YouTubers and people do that as well, where they just they have a giant following. They're like, I'm just not into it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is totally valid and should honestly be respected because that's very very difficult to do. Mm-hmm. To to sort of be confident enough in yourself to say. To, to give up something that, that is that is giving you so much. Um, but at the same time, is it giving you so much? Like if it's making you miserable? That's true. Um, but anyways. Now we're, uh, <laughs> now we're diving even deeper. Uh, <laughs> all right. what, what is joy? What, <laughs> what is cloud gaming? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, where can people find you? Where should I link in the description oh man yeah uh, you can go to youtube.com slash game grumps to check out game grumps um you can follow my twitter at ego raptor e-g-o-r-a-p-t-o-r um or i also run a uh weekly art retweet fest called cutie saturday you can follow that at cutie saturday where i ask a bunch of artists to draw cute girls like pinup girls and i just retweet them all day um, which is great and fun, and you should follow if you like <laughs> seeing good art of cute girls. Who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't? Um, and I guess that's where you can find. I'm trying to think if there's something I should plug. Starbomb. I'm in a band. Starbomb. <laughs> Check that out on iTunes. We do video game parodies. Uh, check out fucking Crendor. I mean, you're already yeah. here. <laughs> They're already here, but I mean, you know, <laughs> please, please watch my well, things. Well, if, if I'm driving traffic from my audience, then yeah, check out fucking Crendor. He's got a show, yeah. Fish Crendor. You should check out his other episodes. Yeah, I got like 27, 28, 20, I don't know. I fish, who have I fished? I fished with uh, Jesse, you fish with Ross. I fished hey. with the uh, Peanut Butter Gamer, Boogie, a uh, whole bunch of people. Michelle. There you go. Michelle check Morrow. it out. Uh, yeah, whole backlog there. Even some WoW dev people, if you like WoW. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. So thanks for joining me, and uh, I never know how to end these, so I'm just gonna end it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just out of fart noise. That's what we do. <laughs> All right. Uh,